Hello. Today we're going to be doing details of the house and today is going to be four fireplaces that Mapperton is proud to have. Really distinguished fireplaces from actually different periods. And we start in the Great Hall uh, with a over, huge overmantel and a fireplace below. The fireplace, which looks a little stained with wood smoke, as it is, um, dates back from the 16th century house built by Robert Morgan. And it's the only thing in this room. And it's the only thing in this room that comes from From Robert the Tudor Hall. Yep. And then the overmantel. Well, the, the overmantel really belongs to a different house called Melplash Court, which is not far from here. Um, but it, it was only because they were in the same ownership, these two houses. In 1695, the Brodrips acquired Melplash Court. And later on, the new owners called the Cumptons decided to move these two overmantels here. Um, they were rather indignant, people who lived there, that really? we'd taken their overmantels. But still, um, what we have coincidentally is the coat of arms of the Marquis of Winchester, the Paulet family. And they were also the sources of the Dorset land that the Montagues acquired. So there was a link between the generations and the centuries. It's a very handsome, rather sort of over ornate overmantel with a rather sort of ornate coat of arms in the middle. But the real fun about it are these two uh, people sitting nonchalantly each side, the green man and the green woman, and they were the supporters of the Paulet coat of arms. Supporters are the um, people or things or animals that support a coat of arms. And you've got what? Um, you've got Neptune and a griffin, haven't you, supporting your coat oh, of arms? We're going to see yeah. later in the library, oh, yes. Yeah. This is the port. These are the Paulet supporters, the green man and the green woman. The green man was a curious kind of medieval figure who lived in the woods and occasionally came out and frightened the villagers. And I, didn't, I don't know of anywhere else that has a green woman too. And we'll see them again next door. And these two swags of fruit are exactly the same as the swags on an overmantel at Montacute House, coming from a group of plasterers who were going round with their pattern book to the major houses of West Dorset and Somerset, possibly Italian, possibly Flemish. And so you, you can walk into Montacute and see exactly the same. But it's very sort of handsome in a rather florid fashion. Shall I read the... Uh, yes, of course. We've but got a secret, is, yeah. secret inscription hidden behind this overmantel, which nobody's seen for hundreds of years. But we're told from the records that it says, Robert Morgan and Mary, his wife, built this house in their own lifetime at their own charge and cost. What they spent, that they lent, what they gave, that they have, what they left, that they lost. Somewhat enigmatic, but it does bring one back to the original house built here. It is a ditty that was used. I mean, it was a um, 17th, 16th century ditty. Shall, shall we go on Let's to... Let's go on to the library. Okay, we'll go on to the next you go for... great overmantel. We're now in the library, which looks as if it's an 18th century room, but it isn't. It's a 16th century room, and that is a 16th century fireplace put in by what, Robert Morgan? By the Morgans, when they arrived. I mean, it's got the spandrels, as they're called, beautifully decorated. And this slab of stone from Ham Hill Quarry, about 10 miles from here. So um, it, is, it is an established uh, fireplace with a new overmantel, as we said before, introduced. Yeah, this was the second overmantel that was brought from Melpash Court. Uh, again, it's Paulets. I mean, the Paulets actually had rather a checkered time because after all, in the Civil War, they support, supported the Royalists and their house at Basingstoke, Basing House, was demolished by the Cromwellians. And then all their lands were taken away during the Civil War. And it was during that period that the Brodrips bought Melplash Court, I should I suspect pretty cheap. And then this was the second overmantel brought in. It's the arms of James I of England, James VI of Scotland. And you can see I, which stands for J, Jacobus, 
and R there for Rex. But it still mirrors the, the other overmantle because James I was on the throne at the time of the Marquis of Winchester, um, which, who was the inspiration for the other one. Yeah, absolutely, 1604. And again, on each side, you've got these absurd green man and green woman. He's really quite a serious green man. They really are. And he's really quite a bosomy green woman. Very odd, very kind of remote. Can you imagine a sort of period when you had these kind of creatures that you thought might come out of the woods one dark night towards you with malevolent intent? Uh, we used to actually can't think why Luke doesn't live in here more. We used to use this as our main sitting room and we had that wood burning stove. Yes, going a very powerful stove it Thank was. Thank God. We are going upstairs, are we now? Yes, we are. To see the yep. west room. And then we shall come down again and just look at the really wicked um, fireplace in the drawing room. If you would like to help support this important part of England's heritage, please become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live. We're in the most important room in the house, which is the Great Chamber, <laughs> and we're beside the most important uh, fireplace, chimney piece in the house, because as we all know, who, all of us who've been listening to uh, films on Mapperton, we all know that the main reception room was upstairs. So this was the main reception room, the Great Chamber, and that was the main fireplace. So not just women, women received, was oh, it? No, 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 it was, the main, it was the main reception mm. room. It was painted, of course, a butter yellow, like so much of this house when we first came in. And we got a rather enthusiastic young man who took the paint, layers of paint, off this thing. He was so enthusiastic, he covered the whole house, stripped, covered the whole house in a layer of dust, which took us months to get rid of. And the spandrels again echoing the ones we saw downstairs in the dining room. Robert Morgan again. And then above is the overmantel and is Robert Morgan's coat of arms. So that goes back to 1550s or so. Yeah. Loyalty, loyalty, sa provera, which I suppose I'm going to translate, but I don't think it's correct to translate it. But it means loyalty will prove itself. That's all right. It's well, good motto. I oh, know, but... Yeah. It's and good. just imagine again the Flemish artists coming in. All over Somerset, there are houses decorated by these Flemish artists. Yeah, with the same motifs. And that motif up there, which is a very fine example of English Renaissance uh, plaster work, is certainly repeated in two or three houses. And we're also going to make sure that you all know about this, which is the wonderful new book on Mapperton, where, of course, if you do read it, which we hope you will, Actually, not until we've done our filming, because you might know more than we do. We will, this. you will, yes. Oh, Lord, darling, we better be careful <laughs> about that. Anyway, But that's... you can get it online. Yeah, well, that, that is obviously the, the last word on the subject. And we, yeah, we have to bug up from it every time we talk to you online, on film. Are we going anywhere else now? Drawing room. Down to the drawing room. To look room. at right. a very different sort of chimney piece. This is a very different fireplace, room, and a, very, a very different one. Yeah, this is a, this room is looks as again as if it's 18th century. Its panelling is, its ceiling is 16th century, and its fireplace I think is 18th century. The fireplace was brought by John's father from the family home of Hinchingbrook in Huntingdon, and was put into this room. Sadly, I don't actually remember it. It might have been in a discreet place because it wasn't suitable for children, perhaps. Well, it certainly isn't suitable for children. It's basically Bacchus, Dionysus, with quite a lot of menads who are followers. They're all probably totally drunk. And you can see that there is actually vines growing up each side of the fireplace. And they're up to tricks, as they should be. And there are no muses there, are there? No, there's no way. No. no muse would go near They wouldn't that. go near the backers. And curiously enough, the fireplace that was there, which was put in by uh, uh, Richard, uh, Richard Broderick IV, um, is actually in the rectory. Yes, and still it, have it. Yeah, we still have it. It yeah. has a pheasant on it, and I don't very much like pheasants, so I've relegated it to a bedroom <laughs> where I don't see pheasants. For me, it's the high life of the... 1960s as well, which was about the time when my father wanted it probably in reinstalled. So there we are. And that's pretty well it, isn't that's it? That's it for fireplaces. But we will do 
more detail filming on, on the house. One will be obviously on ceilings. Another we thought might be on things that have come from Hinchingbrook. It might be sort of interesting to see how much this house has profited, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. profited from the possessions that your family had there. And we can do anything else. We can do china. Uh, I can do fire arms, arms if you like. Anything. As long as I'm given a bit of warning, time to learn it. So for now, goodbye, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and all the rest will be probably just See as you as next always. time. See you soon.